So what's up guys, I am here at Foxtoberfest and I have somebody that I want to introduce you guys to. This guy knows a lot about SSP cars and I know nothing about it and I want to learn so we're here to learn together today. This is my buddy Mike, we met here in North Carolina, Charlotte, or Charlotte, North Carolina, however you want to say it. But this guy has a lot of knowledge on these cars, and he also has a website. What's your website? SpecialServiceMustang.net. All right, this guy knows a lot about these cars, and anything you need to know, I'm pretty sure he knows a lot about it. So, number one, what do we got here, man? 1993 Florida Highway Patrol uh, unmarked car. So this is actually the very last car that FHP sold at auction. Um, you know, at the very end of the run there. So pretty rare car that one of the unmarked cars and uh, pretty rare that it was also, you know, the actual last car that was sold by them. They kept one that's a that's a marked car uh, and they re they updated the unit number to reflect 1993 as the last you know, year of production for those cars. But this is the last one that, uh, that they sold at auction. And um, let me ask you, what made you get into these kind of cars, man? Um, I'm in law enforcement. I've been around these cars. I actually drove one in service for a year. I just love the cars. I've, I've, I bought a Mustang, a Coupe 93 Coupe new back then, and I've always loved the cars. And mid 90s is when I started looking in, and messing around with the SSPs. I've got another 93 Mark car that I bought in 97 from the directly from the state, right. and I still have that. It's still untouched, just as it came from from the auction. So I've got a, a few SSP cars. I just always loved them. So. All right. So for the viewers out there that don't know, because I'll be honest with you, I don't even know what does SSP stand for? Special Service Package. So uh, Ford and and uh, really the California Air Patrol worked together in '82. They put out. 400 um, of those cars. It was a, it was a kind of a one-off thing for for the California Air Patrol. They were looking for alternative, you know, vehicles, and uh, you know that's what really started it all. They produced them through 1993. So. Um, and what and what states? I know we were talking about states and stuff like that. Like so. Many states have them. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's hard. It's it's. There's a huge list of states. Even some, you know, more than others, obviously. But the big, the major ones were like Texas, Florida, Georgia, California. Um, and they all had different colors. Yep, all different colors. All, some some had different options. Because we have one on right the there. That's, that's, that's yep. a little different, right? Yeah, that's a beautifully restored uh, Utah. 80, yep, Utah car. 86 Utah car. The Utah Highway Patrol yep. car there. Yep. Bernie Barrios' car. It's the first show that it's been at. And uh, yeah, he did a great job on that car. It's beautiful. Now, there's some really interesting facts about these cars here that I didn't know about. So. One thing that I was talking to Mike the other day, he told me that you're not a, not really supposed to paint a car black and was it yeah, beige? Yeah, so, so in Florida, there's a lot of problems with driving around a black and tan black marked and tan. car. Yeah, they discourage. Is it now just black and tan for like these cars or can you just paint like, let's say you got a Toyota and you want to paint black and tan, it's no big deal. Yeah, you're not supposed to use the patrol's colors on any car in wow. Florida. See, I didn't know that. Now, you owning this car, uh, owning this car, can you put those lights on or you're not supposed to? Not or? supposed to do that. I'm okay. in law enforcement and I don't do that. Right? No, that's why so, I want to know. Yeah. I, I want people to see that there is rules yeah. to having these kind of cars. You're not supposed to go out and put the lights on and exactly. go everywhere with it. We, we, we encourage responsible use and ownership of the cars. And, right. You know, obviously in a sanctioned event or parade or something like that, where we get permission to do that, nobody nobody cares. It's, right. It's fine. But yeah, you got to be really careful with that kind of stuff. Right, exactly. Because you'd be uh, impersonating a police officer. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right, so let's take a look at this from here. By the way, this thing is like super like mint. <laughs> What's that? No, uh, no, you're good, man. You're good. You just do a little walk around. Yeah, this is the bit. The car is basically original, except for it was painted about 10 years ago. Right. Obviously, it's got newer. Um, it's they're in OS, but wheels and tires and uh, the interior was redone with some NOS material so it's the engine compartment is pretty original on it and the car is otherwise original so when you say NOS so, so they can understand sure, what it new is old stock parts sure. there you go yeah. all right so let's take a look over here man this is what I find really cool now I know when you, when you brought the car in you had like some plastic over it and stuff yep. like that you just, do that just for traveling and yes, stuff sir, like that just to it. yo look how clean this thing is in here man it's good quick shot of that now you were also telling me there's something about radios and a certain amount of holes on the dash and that kind of nature. Sure. Hold on, let me make sure the mic is here. 
<laughs> so for us, part of the fun, now you're not just doing a, a Mustang restoration, but you're also doing a, a, a correct equipment restoration. Yeah. Right? So for this car, you can see it's got the Motorola Micro radio in there. It's also got the, the, the updated radio that this car had when it was in service. Part of the fun is doing the research on the equipment and you know tracking down the right equipment. That stuff's really hard, to, getting hard. Yeah, how do you do that? Like, how do you find all that stuff? It's man? hard to find. Back in the day, man, I've been doing this for a long time, so, but a lot of, it was a lot easier early on. It's getting really hard now to find some of this stuff. You know, depending on, on what agency, how much of it's out there in surplus and floating around on eBay or whatever. But it, 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 that's part of the challenge with these cars. So you're, if you're gonna restore one, you not only have to do the restoration on the car, but you have to also find the correct equipment to put back in the car. And you can all, and you were also telling me that you can also find like the officer that actually drove the yeah, car and yeah, stuff like that yeah. and have history on that. Yep, yep. So Jim Young, who's standing right over my shoulder here, he bought this car from from uh, the, one of the guys who's here, Mark Lamassian. Have you heard of him? No, I had so, no idea. There was a group of guys that used to go around. Come on in, Jim. There was a used to guy group of guys that used to go around the auctions. Yeah. I was there too with them, right? Yeah. Dealers, and they would buy these cars. Jim Bridges is the guy that bought this car from the auction originally, okay. and Mark Lamassian was with him. He's a pretty pretty famous guy in our circles. But um, you know, we we all went around and, and, and so yeah. I don't even remember what I was going to tell you about no, Jim, but yeah. um, he, he actually owned this car for many years and did a lot of the work on it. So, so you're the original owner of this car? I got the car from Jim Bridges in 2004. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, we, so we, we basically, you know, we know the history of the car and just, that's kind of cool too. We all work, you know, trying to find the credit book. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a small little, oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> community he's also, there. Like, he's also a moderator on the site on .net. Okay. So is Bernie. Bernie in that, that Utah car, he's one of the moderators. Bobby, he's also one of our... One of our Take a look at this, guys. Look at all these, look at all these SSPs he's out Georgia here. Georgia State Patrol car. He's not here right now. He's out walking around somewhere, but he'll be happy to let you look at that too. And he's oh, got yeah. a lot of cool equipment in that car. Yeah. Same, same kind of thing. They source the equipment. Yeah. You know, try to be as correct as possible and putting it back together. So. Now, I, I, you were telling me the other day, like it was like really important, like even like the holes on the dash, like yeah. you know, the holes have to be in the right spot for like the equipment. Because if you have like extra holes in the dash, it just doesn't make any sense. So we get an SSB car. You're not trying to get a car that had a radio in the wrong spot or something like that, right? Yeah, we try to be as correct as possible, and that's part of yeah. like doing the research on where things were and, and why they were there, what was there. You know, you can tell by the hole patterns on the dash, what was mounted there. Obviously, a, you know, micro bracket with the two holes in it, it, it and it mounts right up. Yeah. You know, the, we've had pictures the, of inside the cars. The flashlight and the, behind the, the front seat Yeah, I don't seat know if you there. saw it, you guys that's, saw that. That's another perfect example. Yeah. The only thing that fits there is the uh, rechargeable flashlight. Yeah. And, oh, and part of it was, right. yeah. he's in law enforcement just like I am, and yeah. he'll, he can tell you, individual officers, they do, you know, customizations on their cars, we all do, so, you know, maybe that guy originally that had the car, the lieutenant, and that was what I was going to tell you, he tracked down the lieutenant that drove this car down in the Keys, Okay. so there was a kind of a cool story about this car, basically, you know, they wanted to down on them, right? Because they're at the end of their service life. And this guy pretty much hid this one out behind the back of the FHP station down there. Oh, sorry, he didn't want it. He didn't want them, you know, he didn't want them to take it from him. Right. And he kept it as long as he could, but eventually they caught up with him. And That's the last car Florida sold to the general. Public. Yeah, I told him that already. Wow, yeah. the last car. That's super cool, man. And Mark was, Mark was here earlier. I let him know that too. Oh, yeah. Mark came by. And a uh, question here, because uh, all Fox by you guys, you know, say, oh, I got an SSP, you know, is it faster than a regular? It's the same they're, thing. They're the same exact car. Same exact, yeah. car. same exact car. The only difference is that it has like, the radios in it. It's got. There's a few more. So like you know. So what are the differences? Depending on the year, right? Okay. With reinforcements in the seat. Um, different options up front, like for alternators or whatever. Okay. There's oral coolers on on the later cars. I mean, the early so cars were. Hoses. Yeah, silicone hoses. The early cars didn't have a lot of that. If you look at like Bernie's car, there's no um, uh, the blue hoses that you see. Yeah. Even, Carded, the, even the single key locks was an option. Single key locks was an option, right. So some cars had them and some cars didn't. That's part of the fun of doing the research too on some of this stuff. And and like his car doesn't have an oil cooler, this one does. There's the same which is oil cooler. That car takes a full size oil filter, this one takes a small one. So I mean little differences. Were all SSP cars automatic or they were five speeds? No, a lot of them were five speeds. Most yeah. of them were five speeds. Yeah. Okay. At least in Florida. So like for Georgia, most of them were automatics. You'll see the Georgia cars Cal are automatic. California ran more cars than anybody in theirs were all five, five speed speeds that I could think of. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Pretty we, we never say never because you know, we'll have a, a weird car pop up yeah. and you know, but yeah. Missouri tried uh, automatic cars at 88, blew them all up, and the rest of the cars other than 88 are all five speed cars. 
That's pretty cool. Now, as far as the truck goes, man, do you have any like cool equipment that I know we're talking about? Like, you know, you guys have some kind of stuff back there that's different. You know, you guys. Yeah, like us. So, uh, so everything you see up front, the radios that are up here, they're yeah. just control units, they're head units, right? Okay. So the officer can, you know, do their work. Okay. In the back are the actual units, the larger units, and then this car does have. Them. Uh, I didn't know you were gonna have to open the trunk and I'll have to find the key to that. That was fine. Yeah. Hey, what about this thing here, man? What those is this? Are, those are vent shades. Do you guys ever see something like that on a Fox? No. Only SSP cars. Well, a lot of a lot of Florida uh, cars have them. Some didn't. But yeah, they were designed to keep the rain out. They're very hard to find if you can't find them. When you them. find these cars, the way you know that it had them is there's little holes where the screws go in oh, okay. up in the trim. So gotcha. if you find a Florida car, if it's got those little holes in there, then you knew for the screws to go up from underneath, you knew that that's where it had vent shades on it. And again, most most of the guys in Florida ran those because of the rain, the humidity, and stuff. Right. But not all of them. My 85 didn't yeah, not, not, not all of them. Right now, all of really? So, yeah, so take, take a look at the trunk over here, guys. Don't mind my detailing stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, so this is basically the equipment that came with the cars. Yeah, the mic right core, right? Yeah. Up front, this is a repeater, right? For the handheld that they would have ran, and okay. you know it's all correct equipment. There's another piece on the other side too for the for the 800 meg, but um, yeah, this is how it would, would look. And if I was really, yeah. you know, trying to get the car to judge or whatever, I'd pull all this stuff out. But we're here having fun. So. Yeah. What is this here? Huh? That's that's uh, clips. That's how that's supposed to be from the factory. Really? Yeah. I never seen that. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. A lot of times, <laughs> so a lot of times these things fall apart. Right. right. They fall off. They yeah. fall off. So if you see a car that's doesn't have them, it's because it, it's an older car and they fall off. Yeah. So, but that's, cool. that's how it's supposed to be. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Let's take a look over here. Sir, so I'm gonna put it back now. Is there any more information that you would want to share that something that we don't know about because there's like i said i don't know anything about yeah, these cars so, man so check out the website there's a bunch of technical sections on there uh build sheets you can look at different build sheets from different cars you can check out the vent project we've been working on that for years actually bill held standing right over here he's uh he's the main guy for that he's another one of our net, .net moderators and, and Really, I mean, we started it years ago, and he's the one that's been running it, yeah. and he does a great job of um, basically documenting, helping document the car. Right? Cool. Then they were they were producing batches, so we know the starting VIN and the ending VIN of a batch. We can tell how many cars were produced, and you know, start filling in the gaps. On what are like, what are the tail like the tail signs of like SSP? Like when you see one, you're like, hey, I think I might be an SSP a lot, car. A lot of times you can see uh, the speedometer, certified speedometers, written on the speedometers. A lot of times you can Is that, see. It actually says it on there. Oh yeah, you can check it out. Oh, let's take a look. Oh, let's take a look. See certified calibration right at the bottom of the speedo. Same on the other, earlier cars, you'll see that. So, look That's pretty cool. I did not know that. Yep. And then you, sometimes. Oh, I see antennas or antennas, like. Antennas, there's holes, right? Sometimes they leave the, the mount for them. They're called NMO mounts. So sometimes they leave the mount that's, that's you know, threaded on them. Yeah. That's a good clue if you see something like that. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of things you can look for. And they usually, if some of these guys had the uh, the old, uh, what do you call it? It's like a little the spotlight. Little spotlight yeah. there, yeah. Like the 86 car. Oh, there it is right there. Look at that. Yeah, there it is. Cool, man. Well, like I said, guys, we're gonna put up, we're gonna post it up here on his website. Have all his information on there. If you guys are interested in looking at anything with SSP or anything, that, or maybe you guys have one, you need a little bit more information on it. I'm sure he, this guy can help you out with it. So we're gonna go ahead and put that on the bottom there in the link. So just come and check it out. Hey, Mike, I want to thank you, hey, man, thank for you. everything, man. Appreciate and uh, you got a really beautiful car here, man. Thanks, so appreciate it. You know, we'll see you guys in the next one. Cool. All right, guys, so that video is a educational video. Um, really wasn't much going on. Didn't put any music in the background or anything like that. I just thought it was kind of cool just to run it like that. Just like, you know, if you were there with me asking, uh, asking certain questions. Um, so uh, SSP, very cool. Didn't know, did not know all that stuff about it. You know, having the radios in the right place and having like the holes in the right spot. You know, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I just, I'm a little under the weather. I'm um, starting to get better, but I've been sick for, for a couple of days now. But with that being said, pretty cool video. Mike is a really nice guy. Uh, met him in Foxtoberfest, and he was just always cool with me. And uh, gave me the chance to really uh, get in there and look at his car. And, and, and uh, has a beautiful, I, I mean, that car is, is in mint condition, amazing. But go to his website, check it out. If you do have an SSP car, or you're trying to build one, or you're trying to look for one, go to his website, because you're going to find so much information on there i was uh, just kind of going through it and i thought it was a really a uh, really cool site so go check that out um just a quick update 
Um, I have another video coming out that I think you guys are really gonna be, uh, you guys are really gonna like. If you like Fox Bodies, are into Fox Bodies, which this channel is mostly about Fox Bodies, this is gonna be, uh, this next video is gonna be the one for you. Um, you know, like I said, it's more of a, you know, conversation with a, with a man that I met in a, in a Foxtoberfest and uh, I was able to travel down to Miami and meet him and I think you guys are really gonna enjoy it, so stay tuned for that next video. Uh, once again, I just wanna thank everybody for uh, the love, the support, and for helping me grow the channel. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be able to do this. I am still working on trying to get better equipment and trying to get better at editing these videos. So, with that being said, thank you guys. Like, subscribe, share, do the whole thing that we always say at the end of the video. Just do your thing, man. I really appreciate it. So stay tuned for the next video, and uh, I'll see you guys soon.